Hi everyone, I think I'm mic'd up. Testing? I was just saying, like, everything looks ugly at 8 a.m. <laughs> I'm always like, oh my god, you look like a truck just run over you. I'm like, thanks. I'm trying to fit, you know, myself with a the theme. Um, so, good morning. I hope you had some food and you're wide awake. Um, I just want to start by saying this. I've, I'm very familiar with this building because my office is right over there on the third floor. I used to work for ARN when I first started 10 years ago. Yeah, I'm in my late 30s. It's a good boat. <laughs> So, um, just to take you quickly, so my aspiration or dream was to tell stories, and I've always wanted to tell stories. Um, I grew up with a father that collects films, and then when I studied film, he was very upset. I'm like, what did you expect me to do? You know, that's what you do. So, I grew up watching a lot of black and white Indian film from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and I think that influenced my choices. Um, you know, fast forward, I wanted to study film, and then the first ugly reality hit me really hard. I had three things going against me, besides the fact that I'm really small. One, I'm a UAE national. I'll tell you why it's good and bad. Two, being a woman, of course. And then three, my age at that time. I was 23. So at that time, I just um, finishing school, I wanted to study film. And the ugly reality hit me when my dad said, there's absolutely no way on earth you're going to go ahead and do film, because that's not what good women do. I'm like, OK. So what do I have to do to study film? Because we have two options. You either get married, or you stay at home, or study at a local university here. So I had no option, but at the, at the very beginning, I studied at the women's college, finished that, fast forward, went back to dad, asked him the same question, answered me the same way. You can't study film, you have to get married, or you have to do this. I'm like, okay, great. So then I had three months. I'm not going to get into the detail of the story, because a lot of you have heard, them pro heard it probably before, because I've said it so many times. I'm exhausted of repeating it. But just to quickly tell you what I did, which is a bit mental and worked according to plan, it's sometimes you have to fight the ugly in your life and the fears that you have. And I got brave enough to kind of say, OK, I really want to do film badly because I want to be a storyteller. And I want to tell the story of my people. So I had three months to hunt for a husband. <laughs> so, you know, where, I mean, please, in Dubai, it can take you 13 years and you can't find the right person here. It's such a transient city. You know, you have so many issues. You date someone, you're like, oh, God, you know, next. So how am I supposed to do that in three months? I'm supposed to meet someone, make him fall in love with me, and make him ask, pop the question. Yeah, right. Yeah, sure. So then I thought, let me be more practical. Let me put my business hat on. What commodity, what do I own that has value? Money talks, right? So I thought, hang on, I have this Mercedes car that my father just bought me. I don't really need it. So if I sell this car, it's quite a lot of money. And if I find someone young enough who is not that, you know, who needs that kind of cash, he might think that's not a bad proposition. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I'm like plotting, da da da, Harima <laughs> Sultan. Anyway, so I'm plotting the whole thing. Um, two months pass by, still can't find anyone. And then out of the blue, this wonderful person comes up, absolutely gorgeous, tall, handsome, you name it, okay? And I'm like, hmm, this looks interesting. So, you know, after seeing a few other people that were like Xing each one, like an interview, um, I went out with this person maybe just for three weeks. And then over dinner, I, you know, he was never going to, you know, it was really early on in the relationship. So I said, listen, will you marry me? And then he was a bit, you know, he's like, I really do like you, but that's a bit too soon. <laughs> you know, what, what pills are you on? So, um, so fast forward, you know, I said, look, I'll, I'll be very honest with you. This is my situation. I have a semester and like that starts in a month. Oh, I forgot to mention. So I got a scholarship from Abu Dhabi and I got a <coughs> admission at Ryerson in Canada. I was looking for James. Okay. So um, having said that, when I, the other challenge was when I wanted to get the scholarship, they didn't have a film, a film degree as a major for you to study. So they actually created a box. That's so cool. You know, so I'm like kind of proud that 
we kind of instigated this. Anyway, so um, he was like, okay. So I said, look, we'll split the money. We'll take care of each other. You want to do animation. I want to do film. This is perfect. This is the perfect marriage, you know? And he's like, okay. And he goes, will it include everything? I'm like, I'm not sure what it will include. Let's just get hitched. And honestly, it was like a fairy tale. You know, we got married in Dubai. We kind of arranged our, our own ceremony. It was very small and intimate. And we were on a plane together. We went to Toronto. We got enrolled. He didn't get in. We lived in a two-bedroom apartment separately. I mean, together, but you know. And then he said to me on the sixth day, you know, Naila, I do like you, but I got an amazing job offer back in Dubai. I'm leaving. And I'm like, thinking, yes. This is like, this, is, this gets even better, <laughs> you know? <laughs> this is fantastic, you're the best person ever on earth. And he was really awesome. So he left to Dubai, got an amazing job. <coughs> My father called fuming, you know, it's only been a week and you're already like fighting with your husband. And I said, look, you told me to get married, you never said he has to stay around. So that was not the deal. So, you know, um, four years passed by, had an incredible life-changing experience in Canada. I always tell this to any UAE national, women especially who aren't allowed to travel because I think every woman deserves an education and has the right to go away. My, my brother at that time was in, in, um, in the US doing architect, studying architecture. So I said, you know, why can't he do it just because of my gender? That's just not right. So, um, so the four years was life transforming, you know, kind of challenged every belief system I had, um, really broadened my everything. So came back to Dubai and I was like on a roll and I wanted to I didn't want to really work for anyone because I was a bit of an entrepreneur. Even in Toronto, I was able to make money on the side. So I thought, okay, I'm going to start, start a business. And I had no idea how to run a company. I probably still don't, but it, it runs. So that's good. So I came back and I remembered, I'm actually still married. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have I just told the guy I'm dating I'm, I'm married? You know? So I came back to Dubai and then I was telling him, um, I used to call him Joe, and um, a nickname. So during that summer, we had the, I think Dubai court still remembers this as the most amicable divorce ever gone in the history of the UAE because we just looked really good together. We were really good friends. We had no issues. And the man's like, this seems like a very solid relationship. What are you guys doing? So they wouldn't, you know, cut us out immediately. So we had to do counseling for three times, pretend that we're fighting, you know, and anyway. So eventually, eventually it happened. That was done out of the window. Um, and I started my office here, 321, D7. Um, so remember the three things that I said earlier that were the biggest, and let me know how much time I have to speak because I do tend to talk, okay? I need like an, a, a red flag somewhere. So th the three points that I mentioned earlier that were to me really the biggest challenge was, you know, being a female, I always get this kind of look that, oh, let's support her, she's a woman. You know, it's like, okay. Or, you know, I also have an issue with International Women's Day, because why don't we have International Men's Day? Yeah, because we need it, right? Like, we're always crying out victim. I can't stand that. And then the other thing is my age. When I whenever I would go to a meeting or try to pitch to a client, no one ever took me seriously. Because they, I walk in and they're like, okay, you know, where's your, at that time I was, imagine, very young, 20, at that time I was 25 when I came back. So I started my office super young and absolutely had no portfolio. I had a few stuff that I've done in, in uni. You know, they're not like solid, you know, it's not like I have Ernest and Young as a client or anything like that. So no one took me seriously. And it was really hard to break into this market. And I was like six months playing cards with my secretary. We had nothing to do. And I'm thinking, did I just take all my savings and put it in this company? I don't know what I'm doing. And it was really terrifying. And I think that was probably the ugliest time of my life because I'm thinking, you know, I've just, I, and I, I remember the capital, I saved 175,000 dirhams, which is not much, to start my company. But at that time, I was very young, so it was a lot of money for that, you know, someone at that time. So then I thought about it, and I thought, what can I do, creative solution, that can make someone like you take me seriously? And then I went ahead and looked at, where's James? And then I thought, well, maybe not James, you have long hair, I don't know. <laughs> And then I found someone, okay, just like James, okay? I, I, I went and I went for the white man, and I thought, if I get a guy who is in his 40s, who looks serious, who puts a really hot suit on, and a briefcase, and walks with me in a meeting, that might attract their attention. And then I thought, who do I know at that point? You know, obviously I'm in that generation. I thought, my English teacher. <laughs> so, so I went to school, I met my English teacher. I said, look, what's your salary? He goes, X. I'm like, okay, that's crap. Let's talk. Yeah. 
And then I said, look, <coughs> all you have to do, there's nothing illegal about this. You come to meetings with me, you sit an hour, you do exactly what I say, you nod, you say these sentences, you, you get all, and he, he has a lot of personality, so it was easy for him to ad lib and improvise. And I said, I'll give you X amount per hour. It's business. You win, I win, not a problem. He loved it. So we went to a meeting, and with, I think it was the second meeting where we actually nailed a client together. And I'm like, yes! So that was me combating my, the ugly truth. And the other thing, which I always say, I don't know if the locals here kind of feel the same way, um, as a UAE national, and this is a bit sad, the other ugly truth is 95% of my clientele are all from the private sector. I try to work with the government sector, and I have worked successfully, but I always tend to notice something. Even at this time, when I've been 10 years in the business, established a lot of clients, we run the largest film club in the country that's now legal. Um, whenever I walk into a meeting, the first thing that comes to mind is like, they're UAE nationals, let's support them. Now, this sounds good, but you know what that means? The budget just got halved. Because they don't... The, the perception is they might not be as strong as Peter next door or someone. I'm sorry, that's the truth. And I've experienced it myself. And, the, and, and it really hurt when I went to one of the meetings and then one of the marketing had told me, and I was with my German partner, so who's directing this film? It would be him, right? And I said, no, I'm doing it. So the, her whole like, kind of face was a bit concerned. And I'm thinking, you know, the, you can't just stereotype people because with UAE nationals, there's a stereotype that we're you know, lazy, inshallah culture, tomorrow never comes, what else? Uh, payment never comes, you know, all that stuff. Which probably stems from some truth. It does stem from some truth. But there are people like us that defy all that, that can change all that. We're the new generation. Well, I try to be. <laughs> okay, so, um, so not all, of, but, but that has affected us really in a negative way. And that, that's what's been happening. But today, after 10 years, you know, uh, I, I mean, I can brag about my clients. We're working for Samsung next, uh, next week. Um, we did, I think it was PlayStation, Mercedes. And we have huge, big, big brand names that we worked on that, that, that trust us. So I'm thinking if someone of, that, of those you know, heavyweights can trust a company like mine to deliver exceptional work, then I think UAE Nationals could. My gender doesn't define me anymore. For me, when I'm making a film, it doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman or a tree. You just need to be a professional. And I think you'll always be remembered as a professional and not what your gender defies you. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. And I'm 37, so that's not an issue anymore. <laughs> you don't have to open up the floor for a few minutes to questions. Does anyone have uh, any questions, comments, observations that want to make? Do you have an opportunity? <coughs> Thank you, darling. Thank you. Well, thank you twice for uh, bringing these beers to us. Uh, I was very impressed. Uh, a very simple question. Yeah. With this beautiful experience, uh, what did you do to influence your female? That's an excellent question. That's a really good question. When people ask me, what's the highlight of your career? You know, what was the moment where you knew that you're doing something right and that your life path is in your inner happiness, that you're doing something that you wake up every morning, you love going to work. And you know, as much as people hate me saying this, I love going to work. <laughs> it is really, I don't feel like it's work. It's my passion. I'm practicing my passion every day. And that really transcends it. It, it kind of exudes this energy and people feel that. Um, the minute I knew that I was doing the right thing is when I started getting um, emails from very young girls, like 13 and 14, telling me like, you know, I, I love what you're doing, this is my dream, or even, even something as small as on Instagram, oh, Naila followed me, and I'm like, really? You know, like, they're very, it, for them it's a big deal. And so we do a lot of school runs, because I represent Canon here, so we do a lot of like school runs and workshops. So they get very um, impressed. And one day I had this very young, I think 17-year-old Saudi girl who came to my office and she goes, look, she was very nervous. She goes, I want to be you know, a film director like you. My parents are downstairs. They don't like you very much, but I'm just wondering if you can come and convince them, you know, if you can just talk to them. She's studying film now. So I know that it has impacted people's life, and if today it's in a small way, and I hope as my career develops, that it will even reach, you know, 
um, more, I think, footprint. <laughs> It also helps when you have a, an extremely a strict parent. I think that kind of pushes you. I don't know, I think there's some truth. Every time I meet someone who's like a bit sick, I'm like, oh, you've, you've been abused. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's always an abuse story behind it. So just to wrap it up, I just want to invite everyone here in this room, and Delphine knows this very well. We, we with the Dubai Film Festival, and they support us. We run something called, I don't know if you've been a member or you've, you've visited us, The Scene Club. It's a non-for-profit organization. So we bring like top-notch independent films from around the world and we screen them twice a month. So we do 24 events a year. It's open for everyone, so you can join us for the next one. We're screening Egypt's contender to the Oscars. It's called Factory Girl on the 26th, 27th. And if you want to know more details and upcoming films, thescenclub.com. A lot of people got married in my club. <laughs> for the singles out there. 